that is one thing I, I did actually want to bring up. Uh, so we are going to have a discussion um, after some wetland council updates and hearing about another project that's going on. And I would like you to think about, it's an open discussion. You can bring up topics that you want about things you learned today, uh, questions you still have, kick around ideas, next wetland council meetings. It's the place where traditionally we have really started to build that collaboration within this group. Uh, we sit here and we learn, we ask questions, but then like Rich said, it's, can we actually kick around this idea of local mitigation banks and what it means and how can we do it? Um, so I encourage when we do our discussion to be open-ended in what it is. Um, I would like to guide somewhat kind of on this idea of what we've been talking about, but I'm not married to that's what we would have to talk about. Uh, and we will also provide time. One of the traditions we've also always done in the council is that everyone who is here has really, um, during that time, we give them the floor to just say who they are, who they work for, and maybe something interesting that they're working on so that if there's someone else in the room you don't know, but they're working on the same thing, it helps build that connection and you can start to meet more people and do more work around the state. I think when I was starting out, those sessions actually really helped me figure out who I needed to talk to if I was going to Plentywood or something like that, um, which I only got to go to once. Okay, so switching gears a little bit. Okay. As I had stated before, we have not had an in-person meeting since 2019. And that was when we had the planning, facilitated planning meeting for uh, updating the strategic framework document. The strategic framework document at that time we were working under was a 2013 to 2017 guidance document that helped us sort of identify the actions, and they weren't really actions, but actions we could take to meet what is our mission statement of no net loss of wetland and riparian areas in the state, mimicking what you hear with the feds. Um, so because we haven't had a meeting doesn't mean that we haven't actually been doing stuff. Uh, kind of behind the scenes, things have been going on. I think some of you may have noticed um, what we've been doing. Our goal is right now written as at least one yearly meeting. This suffices for our one yearly meeting. But I've been in conversation with Emma and the Society of Wetland Scientists Rocky Mountain about, you know, really, we could probably support two meetings. Uh, one of them an in-person meeting like we're doing today, and another one uh, that Emma would sponsor or even the Society of Wetland Scientists could help sponsor uh, that would be either remote, all remote, or a hybrid remote type of scenario. Uh, last year, we did meet our one meeting requirement, and that meeting was the 2023 Wetland and Watershed Stewardship Award meeting. Uh, it's a meeting that we've done for a very long time, I don't know how many years, but we work with the Montana Watershed Coordination Council and we select one of our members, one of the community members of Wellens, and we provide them award um, basically for their body of work. And then we also highlight, try and find one family rancher or even organization who's doing really good restoration or protection on the ground. And last year we selected the Grossweiler and Marvin families in the Flathead who had protected 400 acres of their farmland between um, sort of between Whitefish and Kalispell that had a bunch of wetlands and other areas. And so 400 acres protected for ag is a lot of money in the Flathead. Uh, I don't know what acre per acre cost is there, but that's a lot of money uh, to tie up in the conservation easement. So we gave them an award. So our plan is, uh, continue to do at least one meeting a year. And I want to keep in person because 
Uh, if you filled out the survey that I put out with the meeting announcement, I was really curious of if you were not from Helena, would you have come? And over half the people said, no, we would participate remote. And after three years of COVID induced remote meetings, I can tell you participation in those meetings, if you are sitting at a computer, is not working. Okay. Some people participate, they're generally the loudest voices, the extroverts, the introverts like myself, we listen, but you don't ever hear us talk. We don't participate. And so I feel it's really important to sit down and actually face-to-face -face meet people. So trying to really want to keep this one in-person format because that's our time to build this collaboration and keep it because that's what made the council successful. Uh, it was not probably all the trainings we gave. It was sitting down, meeting face-to-face, -face, and knowing who you could call when you had a question, who you could collaborate on with projects, how you could do this kind of work. And so um, one continue one person in person and one remote meeting. So we've also, uh, we've been pretty effective at using the Wetland Council listserv. We have not so much been doing newsletters recently. Uh, Emma, which was the National Heritage Program's ecology, they were doing our newsletters for us. And when their grant funding ended, that stopped. And so we've mostly been using it for announcements. But I think it's really important that we start those again. Uh, and talking with Emma, they are also interested in collaborating, but agree too that what's really important is we want others to collaborate. I don't want to have to write what I think about what's happening with wetlands in the state and what's important, because what I think is important, you may not, or you may, but you may have a much better idea and understanding of what's going on and you could contribute. So we would like to continue to do the newsletter, but try and open it up to a more collaborative forum and have people help submit ideas, articles, writing, things that are important to them that others should know. Uh, so you have a perspective. On average, listservs get something like 17 to 20% open rate. We get on average 30%, and that's 330 people because we have 997 people, 977 people that that listserv goes out to. So over 300 people open those emails, look at what we're putting out. So it is an actual way to get information uh, to people and to our members. So something we would like to continue to do. One of the other highlights from the 2019 planning meeting was telling us to get with the times, okay? Social media, uh, make a presence. And so we did. We opened an Instagram account. We opened a Twitter account, which is now, I guess, X. We subsequently got rid of X uh, and don't use it. Um, I think it's it's still there, but we don't use it because it wasn't effective. But Instagram has actually been pretty effective. We've done in the past year and three months, 32 different posts, and we've grown from no followers to, when I checked yesterday, 222. Um, and honestly, I know that there are some new people who found out about the Wetland Council just from Instagram. And so to me, that's kind of a success. Uh, we've done all sorts of different posts, World Wetlands Day, American Wetlands Month. Um, this was an American Wetland Month that we asked Oscar nominations because it's Oscar season to nominate our last year's stewardship award winners. Uh, we also combined it with a photo contest that I know at least Tom Parker sent in a picture of. And we then, no, no, Mark and Mark, thank you, Mark sent one in. No, the, we had actually several people and we, we took those pictures and we printed them. And when we had our annual meeting, we put them around uh, the meeting hall. And one of them from our local uh, professional photographer here in town, um, we actually printed that one and gave it to the lieutenant governor who hung it in her office as a thank you for presenting those awards. So uh, the social media, it's, it's new. It's something we've been doing. It's something we will continue to do. There were some tidbits today in presentations that 
come America Wetlands Month when we try and do something fun again, might be good to remember. Uh, one of them being from Eric's presentation. And Emerald, uh, no, you're not allowed to answer because <laughs> we had talked about this. Uh, the other thing I want to introduce is that through the wetland program development grants and the non-point source and wetland program, we are looking at the development of small project assistance program. We have uh, about $90,000 right now that over the next two years, we'll put out essentially an RFP for small projects that help address potential actions identified in the updated Wetland Council strategic framework. So uh, before I get into that program, the, the strategic framework, this updated one, comes out of the 2019 meeting and it's a 10 year framework. Um, there are some editing that needs to be done on some of these because uh, I just took a screenshot. But what it is, we have four different sections right now of communication and education, science needs, landscape conservation, and regulatory. And we had four different working groups. This was not me sitting in the office writing this up. We had four different working groups come up with goals, objectives, and potential actions uh, that could be taken to basically meet our overall goal of no net land no net loss of wetlands and riparian areas in the state. Uh, this includes potential measures that could be looked at to help us gauge our success, partners we could engage, as well as other working groups. And so there was 16 different people who helped work on these working groups and put this together and handed me these documents that I just had to format to make look a little bit more cohesive. And so it's really kind of proud. It's something that I want you to think about because one of the potential actions was making our information more accessible. And we really don't have a good way to highlight the information that we have. We don't, we have a website, we have a link on the DEQ page, but I got a lot of questions from people I didn't know about who heard about this meeting were like, where do I find information about the council? And honestly, I had no place to really send them. We have an old PB works page. It does not look good. It houses information. But one of the actions that communication team identified is let's build a nice place where people can go to for information and we can put documents and share things. And so that's one of the things that I want you to think about when we think about what are the small projects you might want to do and apply for through the small project assistance that can help us meet our goals and objectives. Uh, I'm hoping to put this project out for an RFP in mid-April. I think that's probably the time frame we could get out. Maybe. Um, and so we will see. But uh, I can also figure out right now, how can I get this document into your hands um, on a temporary basis? But we're not looking at a printed static copy. One of the things was, let's make this a living document that we can add to, we can take out, we can, we can put measures of our success in what we actually saw so other people can see it and we can report. And it's not just what DEQ and the Wetland Program is doing or Wetland Council it's all of you. It's things that you do in your daily jobs that are working towards our goals, but we're not really understanding as a whole state, what is the body of work that's coming out and how close are we getting because we're all working different areas. And so it would be really neat to be able to start compiling those different aspects and really get a, a solid picture of where do we stand in the state? What is the state of our wetlands? Um, hence, kind of the title of this uh, meeting today. And so with that, I would like to open it up for the discussions. Um, but I'm going to step back really quick because I want you to look at this. Uh, ignore the brown mushy part one. And when I was thinking of this meeting uh, and I had this onion sort of analogy come up. Oh, Pat. I don't go right to discussion, do I? Oh, yeah, 
Okay. No, no, actually, I want to go back because this is, uh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, sometimes you need to laugh. It makes it more comfortable. So with the small projects, I said we've been working behind the scenes. Um, we started out with the idea that we would have around $90,000 coming from EPA to do these small projects. We got more money from House Bill 6 to add on to that. Um, and in the past two years, we've actually been doing this granting project uh, on a more of a need by need basis. So a couple of the things we've done uh, identified in the strategic framework was increasing participation of tribal members in the council, as well as providing them uh, and others opportunities for professional development. So we used this money and we provided three full scholarships for that um, two people from the Blackfeet and uh, Blair from CSKT to come to Helena for the Well and Training Institute uh, hydric soils training in 2022. No, not last year's, the year before. Yeah, yeah. So 2022. Um, we've also used this funds to help the Big Hole Watershed produce a film about wetland restoration in the Big Hole, uh, specifically a project that 319 Nonpoint Source Funding is helping do where they're doing a fen restoration. Um, six acres of fen that they're restoring that uh, has been impacted through head cuts and uh, increased irrigation flows coming into that system. And then the one that uh, we're going to actually hear about today is helping T helping fund TU to develop a decision framework for when water rights are necessary for wetlands and stream restoration. 